reading from the Word of God, from the book of Amos, chapter 1, verses 1 to 2 and 6 to 15. Hear God's Word. The words of Amos, one of the shepherds of Tekoa, what he saw concerning Israel two years before the earthquake, when Isaiah was king of Judah, and Jeroboam, son of Jehosh, Jehosh, was king of Israel. And he said, The Lord roars from Zion and thunders from Jerusalem. The pastures of the shepherds dry up, and the top of Carmel withers. For three sins of Gaza, even for four, I will not turn back my wrath, because she took captive whole communities and sold them to Edom. I will send fire upon the walls of Gaza, that will consume her fortresses. I will destroy the king of Ashdod and the one who holds the scepter in Ashkelon. I will turn my hand against Ekron till the last of the Philistines is dead, says the sovereign Lord. This is what the Lord says, for three sins of Tyre, even for four, I will not turn back my wrath because she sold whole communities of captive to Edom, disregarding a treaty of brotherhood. I will send fire upon the walls of Tyre that will consume her fortresses. This is what the Lord says. For three sins of Edom, even for four, I will not turn back my wrath, because he pursued his brother with a sword, stifling all compassion, because his anger raged continually and his fury flamed unchecked. I will send fire upon Teman and will consume the fortresses of Basra. This is what the Lord says. For three sins of Ammon, even for four, I will not turn back my wrath, because he ripped open the pregnant women of Gilead in order to extend his borders. I will set fire to the walls of Reba, that will consume her fortresses amid war cries on the day of battle, amid violent winds on a stormy day. Her king will go into exile, he and his officials together, says the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this reading of your holy word. Amen. Please be seated. The book of Amos is a good book to start uh, Stewardship Month because it's all about stewardship. God made a covenant with Israel. God made a covenant with us, and it's all about stewardship. You might ask, well, what exactly is stewardship? Well, David wrote about stewardship in Psalm 24 when he wrote, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it, because he established it. So God has given us this world to use, and we're responsible for how we use it. And as we see in the book of Amos, what I read to you, there's judgment when we abuse each other. Paul writes in, about stewardship in Colossians chapter 3. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. As working for the Lord, not for men, since you know you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as your reward. It's the Lord Christ you are serving. That's a good definition of stewardship. Well, each of the minor prophets were sent to the northern kingdom of Israel and to the southern kingdom of Judah because God was condemning them for their lack of good stewardship. For example, God gave them his law, and they broke it. God said, I'm the Lord your God. You shall not have any other gods before me. And yet Israel was actively worshiping the gods of the nations around them. God had given them his word. They neglected it. God poured out his love upon them, and they rejected it. God gave them his very presence, and they turned their backs on him. God told them, love your neighbor, and instead they abused their neighbor. All of this is very bad stewardship. And so God sent Amos, and Amos was a poor shepherd from Tekoa, which is near Bethlehem. Bethlehem is in Judah, in the, in the southern kingdom. God sent uh, Amos up to the north, to Israel, because with a message, you're greedy, you're selfish, and you're going to be judged. Amos' message was to warn, warn um, Israel that judgment was coming. And God always says, I send a prophet before. I, I'm sending the judgment. I'm warning you. God called Israel to be a light to the nations. 
And instead of following the light, they followed the darkness of the, the, their neighbor. And there were two major neighbors in Amos' day. The two empires, Rome and Greece, that started to become great empires. And Rome became great because they had great engineering skills. They could, Rome could build some good roads. We should get some good Romans on working for PennDOT to show how to keep these roads together. <coughs> And they, Rome was good at building good armies <coughs> as well. Greece was upset, obsessed with sports. The Olympic Games began in Amos' day. And the Greek language was adopted by all the nations around. When nations spoke to each other, they had to speak in a common language, and they, they chose Greek. So Greek was introducing the world to city-states and democracy and paganism. As for Israel and Judah, God made a covenant with them. You're to be a light to the world. But instead of being the light, they were following their pagan neighbors. And you saw from what I, I read, and if you read the book of Amos, what their neighbors were doing was some pretty heavy, bad stuff. They had a covenant with God, and they ignored that covenant. You might remember that uh, the reason there was a southern kingdom and a northern kingdom was they had a fight over taxes, and their, the nation of Israel broke into two, just like America broke into two during the Civil War, the North and the South, well, and Israel was Israel and Judah. And the relations between these brothers were very bad. They didn't worship together anymore. Israel, they worshiped on Mount Gerizim. They had a temple there, and that's where God sent Amos to go up to Mount Gerizim and preach to the Israelites. And he was to tell them, here's why God's going to be sending you bad weather, a bad economy, and all these other judgments. Israel was the first to be judged because it had the most trouble. And you might remember a prophet, a minor prophet, a couple of weeks ago, Jonah. Jonah was sent uh, to Nineveh. And Jonah didn't want to go because he knew that Nineveh had its eyes on conquering Israel. <coughs> When Jonah preached to Nineveh, the Ninevites uh, repented, and God spared them. And during this time of peace, Israel became a very rich nation. When there's no war, you have money to spend. And that's Israel became wealthy. And their wealth consumed them. They became, they not only had their homes, they had summer homes in the country. But the more God blessed them, the more Israel abandoned God. And instead, they were, just like America today, they were worshiping luxury. Instead of praying to God, they were praying to Baal and the gods of the, their neighbors. Instead of helping one another, they abused each other. And the rich got richer, and the poor grew poor. And their children, there's a stewardship in our children. When God gives us children, we have a responsibility to lead our children to the Lord. And the Israelites didn't care whether their children knew the Lord or not. That's, and I think of that every time I hear parents say, well, I don't take my children to church. I'm going to let them grow up and decide for themselves. And I say, honey, they're, going to, they're already decided they're going to follow you uh, away from God. They worship Baal and Ashtar. And these were sensual religions. They worshiped these false religions because it was saturated in immoral sexuality. Israel wanted to swing with the Greeks and the Romans. And there was prostitution going on in these pagan temples. And instead of serving God, Israel was going to the devil. And do you know for a while, it, they seemed to prosper. Sounds like life today, too. People turn away from God. Hey, things haven't changed. I'm doing pretty good. But there's a check coming. And they were going to have to pay Although Israel forgot God, God didn't forget Israel. No father wants to punish his children, but a good parents will discipline their children because they don't want them to be spoiled. That's the message that God sent Amos to preach in Israel. And you know Amos seems like a very strange person to pick to go to Israel. He was a country boy from Judah. He was a, what you would call a redneck. And I never knew much about what rednecks were until I lived in Nebraska. 
And I would go to um, presbytery meetings, and there'd always be clicks, clicks of ministers and elders sitting here and there. And especially there was a click from Lincoln, and there was a click from Omaha. Uh, and they always talked about, I'm not going to be sitting next to any of those rednecks. And I said, what is a redneck? Well, I found out that, according to them, I was a redneck. So what they meant by rednecks was country people. They looked down their noses at country people. And I kind of kind of looked down my nose at the city people because I'd have to go to Omaha and to, to Lincoln, and it, it was dirty, you know, living so cramped together and crying. But, um, so I guess that you, but they, they, they said you're a redneck. They'd call Amos a redneck because he was a country boy from the Judah, the simple shepherd and tender of figs. And as you look at the book of Amos, you'll see God talking about, here's your judgments, and they look just like the plagues that God visited on Egypt. God announced through Amos, bad weather's coming. And God said, yet they didn't return to me. Amos announced, you're going to have food shortages. And God said, yet they didn't return to me. And Amos announced, there's going to be diseases on your crops and your animals. And God said, yet they didn't return to me. And Amos announced, that locusts are coming and mildew. And God said, yet they didn't return to me. Amos said, there's going to be sickness and plagues on humans. And God said, yet they didn't return to me. And then there were the raids, coming raids from their, their neighbors and their enemies. And God said, yet they didn't return to me. And then Amos announced, there's a great fire coming. Yet they didn't return to me. And because they didn't repent, the last two of these plagues were very, very great. And you notice at the very beginning of the book of Amos, it said it was two years before the great earthquake. Well, that earthquake devastated Israel and the, the nations around it. Uh, it was a huge, huge earthquake. There's a prophet. He announced it two years before that earthquake came. And God said, yet they did not return to me. So finally, Amos announced the final judgment, and that was that Nineveh, the Assyrians, were going to come, and they were going to conquer you, and they're going to take you off your land. And they would become known as the ten lost tribes of Israel. Yet they didn't return to me. So in spite of their lack of repentance, God gave them a promise. If you turn to me, I will take you back. That's how much uh, God loves him. You might remember last week we talked about the prophet Hosea and how God's heart was broken. Well, you, Amos and Hosea preached to Israel at the same time. And you could call them the good cop and the bad cop. Uh, Amos was the tough cop. He announced God's judgment. And you might remember last week Hosea was the good cop. He says God loves you. He wants you to come back to him. Amos delivered God's justice. Hosea delivered God's tenderness. Amos spoke about God's anger. Hosea spoke about God's hurt. Amos said, God doesn't want you to suffer, but you forced his hand. And Hosea said, God, has, his heart's broken for you, but you need to be disciplined. So Amos, God sent Amos up to Mount Gerizim, where the Israelites worshipped. And uh, people were still, they were worshiping pagan gods, and they were worshiping in Mount Gerizim as well. And there on Mount Gerizim, Amos got into fights with the high priest, uh, Amaziah. And Amaziah said, you country hick, go back to Judah, where you belong. And, and Amos said, I am. I'm a shepherd. I'm a tender of figs. But uh, he, God told me to come here and say these things to you. And Amos even told him, here's a prophecy. When the Assyrians come, your wife is going to become a prostitute because to, to survive. That's how bad things are going to be. And then for all the rich women that had gathered up at Mount Gerizim, he called them cows. You cows of Bishan, you're oppressing the poor. So he spoke kind of like a redneck too. He spoke what was on his mind. Amos was a nobody, according to them, and he was speaking to a people who thought they were somebodies. But Amos said, here's what God told me to tell you. You've turned your back on him. You're bad stewards. And Amos, you can well imagine, he made 
the people mad, especially when God said, you're going to, I'm going to take away your houses and your crops. And that happened when that great fire devastated Israel. He said, nothing would be left but charred wood and bare ground. But do you know that even though they were fighting with each other, Amos was praying for Israel. And for a while, God spared them, gave them the opportunity to repent. But yet they did not return to me. You know, Jesus says, keep on praying, keep on praying. God wants us to pray. That's because when we pray, we're changed. And soon our prayer becomes, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God wants us to be good stewards. And yet these people weren't willing. And so Amos said, God's coming like a lion. And he says, Israel, you're going to be like a sheep. And all that's going to be left is an ear and a, a foot. The book of Amos, if you look through some of these minor prophets, they're in poetry. There's, there, and the kind of poetry that Amos writes is called a dirge. A dirge is a, a poem that you speak at a, a funeral. And uh, as long as Amos, he, these dirges were against the neighbors of Israel, and they said, preach on, Amos. It's okay, let God destroy them. But then Amos came, God's going to destroy you as well. And they said, get out, of, get out of Israel. Go back to your flocks in Bethlehem or Tekoa. Abraham used uh, two words. One was a bad word and one was a good word. Bad word was called woe. You know, woe is a curse. It means die. Woe. Woe is me. It means I'm dying. Seek is the good word. It means seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. But because I didn't listen, Amos said the ten tribes of Israel will fall never to return. But then God spoke a good word. Yet I'll save a remnant. God wasn't going to totally destroy Israel. He was going to save those people who remained faithful to him. And then they say, well, let that day of the Lord come. I don't care. Amos wrote, woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. Why would you have the day of the Lord? It's darkness and not light. As if a man fled from a lion and a bear met him, or went into a house and leaned with his hands against the wall and a serpent bit him. It's not the day of the Lord darkness and not light. It's not gloom and not brightness. The Lord is roaring from Zion. So all of this judgment came on them because they were bad stewards. God gave them a land. He gave them his law. And they abused the land. They took from the poor and became richer and richer. They wanted luxury and injustice and hard-heartedness against the, the poor. And so because of their lives outside of the temple, their temple worship became empty religion. So Amos says, seek good, not evil, that you may live. And the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you. As you have said, hate evil, love good, establish justice at the gate. That's where they had their courts, at the gate of the city. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious with the remnant of Joseph. So God judges uh, sin. And it's very brutal, and it's very ugly. And if you want to see how ugly and brutal it is, we see it every time we look at a cross, where Jesus hung upon that cross for the sins of the world, and he poured out his wrath upon Jesus for our sins. He did it because he wanted to save us, and Jesus was willing to die for us. Are we willing to be good stewards for him? Amos proclaimed, love one another, love God above all. We go, as Americans, are we going to look to God, keep our covenant with God? We're going to be good stewards of God's grace. Let us pray. Dear Lord our God, we give you thanks for Amos. We thank you, Lord, for the courage that you gave him by your Holy Spirit to go up to Israel and to proclaim your word of judgment upon them. We just pray, dear Lord, that you wouldn't have to say that word, woe, woe to us and to America and to the world uh, today, but that you, instead we would return to you. And we ask this blessing uh, as a church, and as a family, and as a nation, as